my goodness, what was, oh, shout out. Want to give a shout out to Box Caro. Box Caro reminds me of my deceased brother, Mike. Box Caro is a regular listener and commentator. He's been helpful at different times. He put a note in January 5th, 2022. He did a review of one of the broadcasts, and I think it was at the same time that same week we were doing our monthly broadcast together, and I had had a note to mention the book that he cites in his review, and I didn't do it, and then when I saw that the saw the archive I saw Box Caro's comment and I would encourage I would encourage people to read the book and also to t- check out the YouTube video link he posted the name of the book is The Making of Incarnation and the YouTube video has a, a discussion between the author Tom McCarthy and Hal Foster and it's a a really creative exploration of technology, data collection, um, just a pretty concise cutting through of the problematics of our present era and the technology, and and he throws in history from all over the place. That just the rhythm of the whole trajectory of technological development and how we got here today. Um, and and basis makes the story based on the creation of a dystopic science fiction movie that's being produced, and within this story is um, a look back at the uh, I think it's Gilbreth, the motion time studies, motion and and light that were done in the fifties, sixties. By by this husband wife team that that de- developed extensive sarco- archives of people working and lighting their fingertips and analyzing motion and time time study motion light which is you know it's the the virtual virtual world that's trying to be imposed upon us to replace the present one so anyway those are. Those are my four opening, opening shots. Very fine. Oh, that's good. Thank you for sharing those. You know, I think I'll try to uh, uh, get in on that uh, good stuff uh, to talk about a little bit. Namely, uh, I had some very good conversations in this past week with Bound Together Books down in the Hate in San Francisco. They've been uh, on Hate Street actually since the. 70s, I think, late 70s, and uh, they uh, made a request for copies, if I had any copies of uh, Green Anarchy magazine, which was published here in Eugene, Oregon, from 2000 to 2008, as some of you may know, and uh, so that started off a very cool conversation, and they told me that there's a lot of interest in uh, you know, what we call primitivism or green anarchy or, you know, you know anti-civilization. It's all the same stuff, basically. Anyway, very cool to hear from them, especially uh, uh, getting back and forth with Anne down there, Anne Arkey. <laughs> I, love, I love her name. Anyway, that's uh, that was a real plus, uh, going back and forth a bit this week from with what they're doing. They, I sent them some copies of GA, and they have a big display in their front window. They just put them out uh, immediately, so. Oh, nice. And you know, here we are, 2020, and people, you know, that's, that's a nice sign that, uh, you know, even GA, that's long past, but, uh, you know, still rings a bell somewhat. That's pretty cool. Very, you, very you mentioned, cool. Uh, I would, I would say, you know, it does, it does appear like we're coming on coming upon the other side of the most recent pandemic um, and some of the things that have come out I think absolutely true is the increased interest in primitivism and involvement on, in, in, on so many different levels and, and I, mm-hmm. think, I think you see that in, in the bookstore in the bay kind of and, and looking at texts that have been have been you know, re-looked at, re-gathered. I, actually, I was talking to my youngest brother who 
who was telling me he was looking on Twitter at something or other, and, and he talked about how much entry in the Twitterverse, uh, how much discussion back and forth, back and forth, and you're, you being cited very frequently. Huh. So that's just a random, yeah, random observation. Know. But but I do think you know I do think even in uh, on so many levels, popular television, the the series alone and primitivist skills that that there's that's something that that thrived or grew was nurtured during the pandemic. That is really fine. I mean, we always hope that that's the way things are going, you know, but you can't be sure. And then to get these kind of positive uh, reactions is, is very helpful, very nice. I think I think that one, and then just, just the increase in reliance that the pandemic put in, in the country's most hard hit certainly on technology and then just maybe beginning more of an awareness or an opening into how damning that is to humanity and if you look at the aftermath now though maybe this is premature I'm looking at this title Omicron drives countries to accept virus as fact of life and and I think you know, I'm hopeful that that's what's happened, that uh, we're now in the process, we, we're over the hump, and that that the whole use of technology, reliance on te technology, the isolation, the current violence, kind of the, 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 the blowback, the, the flash, and, and we have to, in anger and in sorrow, recognize Minneapolis and another GD shooting by the murder, brutal murder by the cops of another person of color in Minneapolis, you know, just like two years ago. Um, mm -hmm. George Floyd, all over again. All over again. And, and, and that's what, I mean, local TV, you're just hearing more and more in response to the increased shootings and all. You're hearing, who, wasn't it? Joe Biden, who was saying something about, well, the answer is not to defund the police, and and it's like <laughs> the answer is way more than that. But that certainly was a good starting point put out number one by BLM, and so so you mm -hmm. just see the you know the whole whole garbage coming in the back door again to to try and keep keep our language and, and anger under control. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Well, I thought the particulars of it are rather striking, uh, even almost aside from the horrendous fact of the thing. You know, it's usually, or very often the case, when you get these video cam recorders that cops are supposed to uh, be supplied with, and more often than not, you know, th when they're pulling something off, Oh gee, we forgot to turn it on, or or mm -hmm. it malfunctioned. There's, but in this case, it, it really kind of amazing. They showed the damn footage. They're coming in there. They sneak into these. It's a no-knock thing. They they let themselves into this apartment, and here's this young Amir Locke, age 22, lying on the sofa with a blanket over himself. He's obviously asleep. So they kick the sofa to wake him up, and th you can see in the footage. It's clear as anything. He's got a gun in his hand. He's that's what's sticking out from the blanket. His head is under the blanket, and instead of just yanking the gun out of his hand, you know, uh, they just they just shoot him. Right, right. Shoot him three times, and it's not aimed at anyone. I mean, so it's just blatant. That, like George Floyd, you know, nine and a half minutes of public execution. Here they they supply the video. Of, of just wasting this guy. Wasted this and guy in nine seconds. Nine mm -hmm. goddamn seconds. And he's dead. It's really remarkable. You know? I mean, and just his parents, talk about occupying force. You know, to, well, I mean, yeah. It's just, yeah, there it is. I mean, in so much to me, it's just like flashback to Mark, Fred, Fred Hampton, Mark Clark. Mm -hmm. Yeah, back then. Yep, yep. Back then. Same thing, you just bust in shooting kill him cold blood and yeah as long as we're back in the dark side of why this all has to come to an end um, 
the the pornographic video proudly reduced and replayed over and over the pictures of Syria and the drone mm-hmm. drone strike. Um, Boy, there's, there's so much to. Uh, I, I saw in the Sunday New York Times this past Sunday a piece called "Apocalypse Whatever." I'll just quote that from "Don't Look Up" to "Search Party." We're awash in parables and warnings, but global warming is outpacing our emotional capacity to describe it. Piece by Amanda Hess. Well, I don't think it's so much not a, an incapacity to describe it. And, and it's, not just piece, glo- it's not global warming. Well, you know, it's everything. Everybody feels it. I mean, it, it's sinking in. This is, this is the kind of piece that just in some ways begs the question, it brings up this, the topic, you know, here it is, it's apocalyptic now. Anyway, you're seeing more of this and it's, you wonder if it's going to really get through to, uh, you know, to some kind of bottom line that means something. I, I was reading in the New Yorker, Kim Stanley Robinson, I remember right, right. reading, yeah, new book, I remember, I think the only thing I read of his was uh, Days of Salt and Rice. I, I remember liking it. Anyway, long piece about him and what he's thinking. It's, it kind of wanders around. It's mostly about how he how he likes to hike, and there's all this stuff about hikes and on and on. Well, the bottom, the ver- the very last paragraph uh, gets down to uh, more interesting stuff than where and why he likes to go on hikes. He says, quoting Robinson, "We'll have to make some big changes," he said. I just hope that we won't have to make them so quickly that we break everything. And the writer ends up saying, I wonder what he meant by everything. Jobs, currencies, supply chains, coastal cities, beaches, food, ecologies, societies. And, he, and he's looking around thinking, uh, well, it, it implies you got to do better than that. Big changes, anyone can say that. You know, the president or anybody on earth could say that. It doesn't mean anything unless you get down to brass tacks, unless you start spelling it out. It it just kind of wasted the opportunity. We'll have to make some big changes. I mean, it's that ain't got. That's not cutting it anyway. It's a long piece which ends with a kind of weak uh, summary. Yeah. Or uh, you know, that doesn't go anywhere. Well, I, I've, I wanted to still stay on a bit. The a so-called ISIS leader kills himself in Syria raid and link that back to um, the book The Making of Incarnation and mm-hmm. link that back to the basically overall theme of that this post, I'll be, I'll be bold and say post-pandemic height. Um, mm-hmm. that, that one of the sequelae is more of an awareness or, or need to critique, really understand how damning the technology is and what it's doing to humanity. And these, these cold pictures that were thrown out on front page New York Times, Wall Street Journal of the, the compound where the ISIS people were and then then the you know I mean the the video itself just this this capture in video this that this is reality this is some common narrative we have or something and then this is this was the Wall Street Journal this is our president all right quote in a final act of desperate cowardice with no regard to the lives of his own family or others in the building he chose to blow himself up, not just the vest, but to blow up that third floor. Anyway, this is a whole narrative supplied to the picture based on based on nothing. It's the story of, uh, it's telling you what you think you're looking at. Um, and, and, and the jump, you, which the pandemic caused, used, whatever, the, the reliance on Zoom, on, on in-house learning, on children in their houses doing so-called hybrid learning, hybrid work, remote work, the whole don't talk to each other, you know, stay, stay distance, be distance, live distance, save yourself. Um, 
that that's something that that the effects we're we're seeing this right now and even the shooting in Minneapolis it's like blowback or trying to reclaim territory uh, of of resuming the post pandemic and there's no there's no resumption like it's time to learn the the collectivity the networks that were created the time spent outside the time you know the importance of not being in enclosed spaces in, in mass gatherings in close tight spaces you know all these kind of things are the where to go what to hang on to you know start start to start to see as we can more and more get together and see and be with each other and work together collectively that's the that's the story and when you start seeing this this the reclaiming the re reinstituting of, of what needs to go down that's the mm -hmm. that's the that's the time to rise up rise up so anyway <laughs> there goes yeah, Catherine yeah. on her high horse again <laughs> well we also see the weaknesses of this whole thing they're trying to roll out I, I think I can, uh, if, if, if I could, go to the whole Metaverse project yes. and what's happening there. There's a lot of news about that in the past week. You know, and it's funny, Wired, talk about, it's up there with Verge in terms of peddling all this E stuff, uh, referred to the Metaverse as a deeply uncomfortable, worse version of Zoom. I mean, and it's not, and it's more interesting than that they would be so negative about it, but it's just it's one big fail it's going to this week anyway I mean Zuckerberg and Meta the new name for Facebook lost 10 billion dollars in 2021 pushing the metaverse you know they're hiring all these people and trying to gear up for rolling it out uh, and so the Sunday New York Times said Meta is off to a very rough start according to Kara Swisher and they go on to talk about the metamorphosis of Facebook, you know, turning into meta and pushing the metaverse, how it's all about, as we know, the digital meets VR and it's, it's augmented reality. That's rich. Augmented reality is precisely the opposite. It's when reality is really made to disappear. You know, that's, that's what it's going for. That's what it's really pushing. You know, and it's the, even and it's even worse than that for these people. I mean, it, it's a, it's a really not happening. In fact, Facebook, their total number of users is declining. I mean, maybe the whole thing is right. Uh, it's it's been replaced. Abandoned. TikTok is the Chinese TikTok is the leading now. That's the well, yeah. There's no end of uh, the alternatives. You know, there's there's a million. Well, it's reasons, like the but, mutations. It's like a like mm -hmm. a COVID. You know, and it's meta like shares the went one, down 20% last Thursday. That's the biggest one-day plunge in the history of the stock market. So I'm, I'm finding this uh, nicely interesting that this thing is just a big flop so far. No, no that's, that, that's been wonderful to see. It shaped the whole yeah. economic system. You 